I'd like to call to order this regular meeting of the City of Sebastian Natural Resource Board, Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. If we could, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can I get a motion for the approval of minutes for February 7th, or if we have any questions? Oh, I apologize. I'm sorry, getting ahead of myself. Can we have roll call, please? Yes. <clears throat> Dr. Carrier? Here. Ms. Callahan? Present. Mr. Stadelman? I'm here. Mr. Bradley? Present. Ms. Ware? Present. Mr. Carano? Here. Ms. Billman? Here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, can I get a motion for the approval of minutes or any questions from the February 7th, 2023 meeting? I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the February 7th, 2023 meeting. Thank you, Tom. And I second it. Thank you, Donna. Uh, can we get a voice uh, motion for approval or aye for approval? Aye. 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 Motion to approve the minutes is passed by unanimous voice vote. And we'll move on to item five, announcements. Um, does anybody have any other announcements on the board here that they want to bring up? Uh, I think Felicia has some announcements and I have two announcements after her. Thank you, Charles. All right, so my first announcement is uh, just a quick summary of the FWC workshop uh, that I attended on Tuesday, February 14th, happens to be Valentine's Day. Um, it was a workshop held for local governments in Port St. Lucie, um, and it, they touched on the relationship between local governments and gopher tortoises uh, and the conservation efforts towards helping the gopher tortoises um, and how local governments can improve their own practices, land development codes, permit requirements, um, and educational efforts to help the tortoises. Uh, so it was really insightful. Um, they shared some uh, potential partnership opportunities, which I have shared with you guys in your agenda packet. Um, so if you are interested in looking into any of those um, opportunities um, that they've offered, you know, that's a great place to look. And um, they also shared what you can do if you come across a gopher tortoise and a burrow um, when you're out and about. Um, and you can report it to their GT Sightings web app. Um, I have the website here with me if you guys would uh, like that. Um, just to say it so everyone can hear it, it's... Um, app app.myfwc.com forward slash hsc forward slash gopher tortoise. So. <laughs> <laughs> or you can say it slower and, or, and post it on our website as well. That's true. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. I can add that on there. But yes, if anybody wants that, um, if any of you guys would like that web address, you can come see me after. I'll make sure you have a copy of it. Um, and then also we have a, um, a little event coming up that I'd like to share with you. I'm going to switch to the podium so I can pull that up for you. All right, can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fantastic. So this is a free residential uh, paper shredding event um, that is being hosted at the Southeast Secure Shredding in Vero Beach. Um, it's on April 15th and runs from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Um, all the specifications of what they're willing to take are listed here. Um, and I figured this is a good event for you guys to be aware of. Um, I figured, you know, share the information, especially since we have our own waste shredding or waste management shredding event kind of coming up at the Earth Day event. So um, just gives people another opportunity to do uh, something very similar. That is all. Thank you, Felicia. I greatly appreciate that. So if you have um, gopher tortoise sightings, please go to our website and uh, find that website to report them and the uh, residential paper shredding event for Saturday, April 15th, 8 a.m. to 12 noon at 3910 US1 Bureau Beach. 
Um, the only uh, announcements I have, uh, we have uh, uh, Rotary, Sebastian Rotary has uh, River Days, which was formerly Shrimp Fest, coming up this weekend. Uh, it starts Friday at 3 p.m. We are looking for some volunteers um, for Thursday for setup uh, at, we, at 9 a.m. at Riverview Park. Uh, if you can come out uh, for an hour, 15 minutes, or you can stay for the whole event. That would be uh, great, uh, but River Days, formerly known as Shrimp Fest, is this weekend. Starts Friday at 3 o'clock, but Rotary Sebastian could use some volunteer hands. 9 a.m. at Riverview Park, US 1 Sebastian. All right, that's my first announcement. Ah, I'm going catch my breath because I was coming in pretty quickly. Um, my second announcement is just uh, I, I received mail and letters in based on being chairperson of the Natural Resource Board of Sebastian. I get them from a lot of different places. But I'd like to read one to you that I received just um, a couple of days ago. And it's in regard to when I send out the information for Sustainable Sebastian and the IPM Integrated Pest Management. <clears throat> This letter, though, comes directly from the White House, um, United States government. Dear Mr. Stadelman, Sebastian Natural Resource Board, thank you for writing to me about our environment. Our land, sea, and air are some of our most precious resources, and I believe we have a sacred duty to preserve America's natural wonders for all time and all people. And then um, I'll skip through to together we will safeguard our environment and preserve the natural wonders of our nation for generations to come. Sincerely, President Joe Biden. So I wanted to share that with you. Okay, if there's uh, no other announcements, excuse me, we'll move on to any agenda modifications. No, and I don't see any. Uh, we'll move on to item seven, public input. Any public input from Zoom online, perhaps? Nobody. Nobody's raised their hand. Thank you. And we'll move on to item eight, unfinished business. Earth Day planning. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> planning review, board members to report progress updates. Okay, so if, um, do you want to take over with that? Felicia? All right, so just to give you guys an update on how the retail and food vendors are going, uh, right now we have a total of 43 vendors already approved and ready to go. Uh, that's three food vendors, 26 retail, and 14 19, uh, sorry, 14 nonprofit or organizational vendors. Um, if there's anybody that you want to see participate, um, and you don't think that they were on our list previously, please let me know um, so that we, we can send them an invite. Um, we still have plenty of room, and I've been getting in um, more applications consistently, but I, you know, I, don't, I can't say we're necessarily going to hit our numbers of the total number of vendors for last year based on just the number of applications received. So if there's anybody you'd like to see come, especially food vendors, because we had five last time. We only have three of the five this time. So... Uh, yeah, please keep your eyes peeled or please feel free to invite them, tell them to go look at our website um, where they'll find the application. And um, I did want to talk about site planning and the booth spacing and make sure I, that I understand how this was done um, in previous years so that way I know as far as the mapping of the actual where the vendors need to go um, and also how it comes, like, right before the event, like, if you guys, like, I think maybe, Charles, did you go out in the past and, like, number the spaces to uh, identify so that we each vendor knows, okay, this is your spot, this is, like, or, you know, or, like, this is where the spacing is? Uh, me and Dr. Carrier actually go out, we get out there just before daybreak and with a map provided by you mm -hmm. with all the spacing, and then we'll actually measure out each space. We'll, put the little flags down. We'll need a, like a, a group of whatever we're using for markers, those marker flags, and then we'll measure and uh, we'll have them all spaced out by the time everybody gets there. We're usually done by that with a box of donuts and a couple cups of coffee. Okay. Um, was that, were those flags, did Kim buy those for you guys in the past? Is that how you got yes. those? Okay. Um, as far as I know, I don't 
I don't know if we have any in our supplies list, so I will go through and make sure that we have them. If we don't already have them, then I'll make sure we get some of those. Uh, 80. <laughs> 80. At oh. least. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope they didn't get thrown out, but if they did, I'll make sure we get more. Um, do you guys have any idea of how much they cost, Kim, in the past? They're really inexpensive, 30 bucks okay. for a big handful of them. Okay. Or less. And you said you do that the morning of? The we, go, we actually will coordinate... Um, because I, I think we got one more meeting before Earth Day, and then we'll actually coordinate a couple of days before, and then that morning we'll meet up. Okay. And we get there, literally there isn't anybody else. Mm -hmm. And we're like, eh, you know, you let's <laughs> goof off, measure, measure, 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet, and we just do that 100 times before 7 o'clock. And uh, that's usually get us through. We also mark the flags, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, with the number of the yeah, spots? So, yeah, we, we need the flags with a black magic marker, and then um, each one gets one, each two will get two. So this, it helps. Microphone, microphone, please. Microphone. Microphone. <laughs> Usually. Uh, included with that is a list of vendors and what sites they've been assigned to because more often than not before we get completely done somebody shows up wanting to set their table up and so it's useful if we can direct them to the proper location. All right, well, I'll make sure that I get you guys that map, at least um, I set a due date for myself of when to have the map finished. So once I have the map finished, I'll make sure you guys get a hold of that. And, and, and if we can get them blowed up. Oh, yeah, the larger, yep. like, poster size? Yep. Okay. With the names of the vendors, where they're supposed to go, because it's hard to read tinies. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. And you'll want to make extra copies, because oh, we'll yeah. need them at the... Like, people come to whomever they see, and it's nice to have several distributed amongst... at the NRB booth, but as well as other... Okay, yeah, so I'll just make copies. enough copies for all of you guys. Absolutely. All right, and then um, same thing with environmental organizations. We're pretty good there, um, but if there's anybody else that you want to see come to the event, please let me know or please invite them and just tell them to look at our website where the application can be found. Alicia? Yes? Um, quick question. Do you have like a, just a name? Microphone? Oh. Is your microphone on? It's, it's on. on. It is. Um, do you have a list of just the vendor names so that we can see who's, who signed up? So we don't have to duplicate or we can see if people are missing. Right. We don't need to know what they're doing. We just want to see who's on the list. Okay. Um, I will. I still have some applications waiting in queue to be approved, um, but I will send you the list of all the ones that have already applied so that way um, you, have, you have that and then you know, okay, this person's already, you know, applied and you don't have to contact them again. Yeah, that would be helpful. Thank you. Since you brought up the topic of, um, you know, is there anybody else in an organization that you would like to, to have to see come, um, and since we're down in the total number, is it appropriate at this time now that we have the flyer complete to maybe see if we can get some marketing out there, like to have Andy Hodges post something at least to say, hey, this event is occurring. I know Charles tends to post it a bunch of times as well on Facebook, but just to get it out there. Yeah. I can talk to Andy Hodges. He actually reached out to me, um, and he was like, oh, hey, I heard you're the one who's running Earth Day t this year. Um, so he's ready and willing to receive the information. I wanted to send him um, as complete of information, so once we had all the Living Docs information finalized and once we had all the entertainment stuff finalized, I figured I would send it to him then, but I can ask him if it'd be okay if they just post the current, like the, the general event flyer now um, rather than waiting until all the information. And then I'll send him the rest once we have that all finalized. <clears throat> All right.
Alrighty. Um, Nikki's not here tonight, so the stuff about um, the talk art contest, that was um, something we were going to discuss with her, so we'll move on. Um, Sherida, you and I had talked about uh, getting in contact with Curb, but you had no luck reaching them. No. So, so we need to see if there's anyone else that I can contact about cleanup. If anyone has any suggestions. Yeah. So in the past, I guess Curb had offered to host a cleanup at the event. Um, I'm sure you guys would know better than I do uh, what years they would have done that at, um, if they had ever done it. Um, Kim had it in her notes as, oh, you know, confirmed that Curb would host an event, the cleanup event. So um, if you guys know anything or if you have any other ideas about who could potentially, if not, we can just forego it this year and not worry about it at all. Does anybody recall us having a cleanup event at Earth Day? We've talked about it, but it never really materialized. And um, it was kind of um, almost outside of the scope of everything else that was going on because we'd have to leave our stations, even with the living docks, because it, luckily it's just right over there. But mm -hmm. it's, um, I don't think we've ever done it. It's something we thought about, but it didn't materialize. But I would like to get in touch with Curb because I still am the litter quitter um, spokesperson, but I still haven't received any formal training. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, all I can do is say, don't throw that plastic out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they're like, who are you? And, um, but uh, we do need to get hold of the Curb people. Yeah. Well, Sherida, if you, if I don't know how much more I can ask you to do since you've tried to contact them so many times, but if there's... Um, if, if anybody has any other ideas of how to reach them, um, because you should try the contact info on their website, right? And right. There wasn't a phone number. It was just a, a info at kind of thing. And so I sent several emails and never heard back from them. To me, it appeared as though nobody was home or answering it. So I don't know. Nobody home. I recommend we move on from that event then and maybe concentrate on something that Sounds good is more to me. timely. That's just my recommendation. But can I go back to the posters? Where are we with the posters, distribution of the posters and flyers? Felicia, do we know? Well, Felicia's going to print them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the time level is for that, but I said that I would be happy to just distribute them. So, oh, I hear you. So we were supposed to do, you got to catch me up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, so. So um, we're going to do the poster size, correct? Right. And where do we place those? Well, I sent a whole list to Felicia. Mm -hmm. okay. She has a whole list and she added three this or four. One. Okay. She added three or four more to that, to that original list, which is fine. And um, so we can bring them around to that, to, to all those spaces, that, places that are. On, on the list there. Um, the other side of it is the, um, the calendars. There's calendars that are electronically um, input that somebody has to actually sit down and put into all the calendars just to say, and it's, you can't send them a poster, it's, it's words. You just send them, can you please put this on your on your calendar so that they all these other organizations, like say the Barefoot Bay, has their own website that you can send them a, um, a blurb that says, you know, come come down to Riverview Park on the second, 22nd and participate in Earth Day. You know, th those kind of things. So it's just up on their like, all these different community calendars. So that doesn't cost anything. It's just a matter of time. And if you want to put the verbiage together, I have somebody in the club that can post it to those websites. Oh, okay. And, and that can be done, you know, next week. So, so Donna, that would be fantastic. can you, how far in advance do we then distribute these flyers and do these calendar requests? Okay. Because I'm, I'm seeing that we're like half the vendors that we had, so I, I'm not sure that we're getting the, the word out like we should, and forgive, she's a newbie, I'm a newbie, no. so I forgive us. So but. most of the places where I put the posters are establishments that are here within the city. Okie doke. So it's more um, a tourist kind of thing. So all the, all the hotels and restaurants and places that people are visiting already, 
and a lot of them don't like to have it too soon. They right. like to have it the week of the event. Mm -hmm. But posters, some of the places will put them in their windows ahead of time, but the flyers themselves will go out that week before, uh, the week of the 22nd to, to all those establishments that, that are here. So when, what's the... But we can, we can post the stuff on the calendar sooner than that. Like by the beginning, by April 1st, we can, we can post all the calendars right away. Perfect. And when should we have the posters done and ready for you? I told her the first week in April is good. What, is that good enough? Okay, that's again, fine. I'm sorry, I'm not no, that's ready fine. to all of these that emails. That would be perfect. So. Awesome. Because we'll, be we'll be doing our own flyers from the art club, and they will have a miniature version of the poster on one side and then the Lagoon art show on the other side. So they'll get that, too, as well as your poster. So... And how many copies do you recommend? Do you recommend just one for each location, like poster size? Yes. Okay. Yes, one per, per, one per them. But you can give me extras, and I can see if other places will put them up. It can't hurt. You can give me, like, ten extras. I don't have any problem knocking on doors. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. No problem. Alrighty, so just to now touch up on the beer stuff, just so you know where we are on that, we have received city council approval, so that's uh, a go. Um, Rotary is acquiring their liquor license. Um, the biodegradable cups with the logos have been ordered. Um, the beer has, is being acquired from JJ Taylor. Uh, they're donating that. The types of beer are Yingling and Yingling Light, uh, and those are going to go for about uh, at least as of right now, um, we think they're going to go for about $5 a cup, uh, unless that changes. And then for craft beer, if they have any craft beer, uh, it would go for about $6 a cup. All right. And do we, then, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, do we have any um, contact information for J.J. Taylor? Because the, the whole idea behind serving the beer uh, wasn't just to enjoy ourselves and drink beer. Because um, I, I really, I personally really don't really drink a whole lot. Um, but I wanted to do is get them to set up a booth and tell the whole story of beer, how it's crafted, how it, how it was imported from Europe, how it came in through the Caribbean nations when they were basically, um, uh, you know, colonizing and the, and the British brought over beer. And that, I want to tell the story of beer and how people make money on it as well with the whole Earth Day process. If we can get some information on contact for them, that'd be good. Yeah. Get I, them to set up a booth. Yeah, I can uh, reach out to Mark Gingras, um, as he's the one who's from Rotary side who's coordinating with J.J. Taylor on you know, acquiring the beer. So maybe there's some information that J.J. Taylor can provide about the beer itself. And about um, J.J. And Taylor as a distributor and how they provide jobs for the area. Um, because that's all, that's all part of our story, too. Do you want Mark's phone number? I have his uh, Well, Mark is um, in my Rotary Club, oh. and I see him all the time, and I'm actually still president-elect of the Rotary Club. Yeah. I mean, if you, want, you. if you want to, you can go ahead and like, speak to him you know, and pose that idea to him yourself. So he, you know, no, 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 I leave it to you because um, if there's any problems, you can coordinate everything. So you stay on it. And then I'm like a last resort in that stuff. All right. Well, we we skipped over the the poster contest and the face painting. I just want to make oh, sure I'm you sorry know. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, the poster contest is definitely on. We're we're going to have um, the charter middle school here, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders participating. And the Fine Art and Music Committee has uh, has agreed to do all the prizes oh, okay. for the poster okay. contest. Wonderful. So that's all checked off. Okay. Um, and as far as face painting, we're good. We're good with that too. So it's taken care of. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, Donna. All right. So let's go on to the entertainment stuff. Um, I'm also going to pull up something on the projector for you guys as well. All right, so 
what you see here is our proposed entertainment schedule. And I just want to check in real quick. Sarah, are you there? She should be here on Zoom. I, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, fantastic. All right. Okay. So this is the proposed order for how everything is going to go for the day of the event. Uh, the Arbor Day Proclamation is going to start right at the beginning of the event at 9 a.m. as per usual. Um, I, uh, I heard from Ron this morning, Charles, that you, had, uh, you were interested in contacting uh, Mayor Jones about the proclamation. Yes. Okay. Did you happen to get in contact with him? or I haven't contacted him directly personally, but I, I did leave him an email, and he generally responds within a 72 hours for sure. I, but I haven't seen them not do it yet, unless something came up. Fantastic. And, so I guess you know we'll, we'll see what he says when. Uh, if you could CC me on whatever he respond or just forward me whatever his response is. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to need any information from me as far as like how the proclamation should go because I have copies of the previous proclamations. If he needs it, um, I did speak to him yesterday because I was like, oh hey, you're you know I ha haven't seen him in a while, so I asked him. Um, what he thought about it. He was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm sure mm -hmm. he'll get back to you with a positive response. Did you want him to read the proclamation at one of the city council meetings prior to? Like, they have a proclamation readings. Mm -hmm. Did you want that to occur? Because if you did that, you'd have to put on their agenda. If not, we can just deal with it at our Earth Day. But it's an option for you. Yeah. you like. Was that ever done before? Did you guys ever have them read it at a city council meeting in the past? Yes. Yeah, but um, I, I I believe so. I believe that that Kim it, would be there and and he would read it. So if we want to prepare that for the April twelfth <laughs> meeting, I think that's the city council meeting. And then we can use that also as promoting Earth Day a little bit right. as well. So um, right. usually the mayor at the time will come up and read. I don't think they ring the bell still, but they do a proclamation. And it's it's actually an Arbor Day proclamation, I believe. Yeah. Right, because it's it's specifically for the Arbor Day mm -hmm. part of the Earth Day event. So fantastic! So we'll get that squared away with Mayor Jones. Uh, tai Chi Tai Chi demo is set for 9:15 a.m. Um, and also, as you're looking at this list um, for the setup times, I, that was just kind of a proposed setup time. Um, of course, you know everybody can arrive way earlier than the uh, suggested setup time. Um, that was just how how I thought you know the early, or the latest they should be arriving. Um, now, our first performance is going to be at 10 from 10 to 11. Um, that's Rebecca McIlvain. Uh, Mojo Mike is going to go on from approximately 11 to 12. Now, with um, we have two newbies, uh, like uh, who have never, or I should say, technically three, uh, because SRHS is uh, joining us this year. Um, Rebecca and Kevin are new, and so what we were intending to do with their performances is that. Um, to make the transition smooth between them and the next performer who has been here for previous events, um, they will start tearing or start tearing their tear down um, just a bit earlier before the official cutoff time of the slot, just to make sure we have enough time for the next band, especially because the next band after them is going to be larger, so they'll need that you know time space to fully set up. Now, um, also I have my notes here that if those if that performer after Rebecca or after Kevin wants to come set up when Rebecca or Kevin respectively is setting up, they're more than welcome to do that. So that way everything's on the stage. All they have to do is come do their sound check and that's it. Uh, then SRHS has their time block. Uh, there's actually jazz band and the steel pans are going to be performing for us this year. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I'm very stoked about that. Um, so they'll be from 12 to 2, um, respectively. Um, and then Kevin will be 2 to 3. And then, like I said, for uh, Rebecca and Mojo Mike, there'll be a little bit of that transition. Um, so he'll probably come off the stage at 345. And then Robert Johnson will go on, and he'll finish us off. Excellent. And then also between 
between SRHS and Kevin, that's supposed to be when the uh, poster contest announcement is. So um, if, if I get this wrong, please correct me. Um, but you guys normally, Charles as the MC, you go on stage and you announce um, who the poster contest winners are. Right. Yeah. I generally, I'll open up, let's, let's have a good time. Mm -hmm. okay, welcome, blah, blah, blah. And then I uh, announce each, everybody who's coming on, the Tai Chi people, and then everybody in between, I'm telling the Arbor Day and Earth Day stories and the City of Sebastian stories. And then we plug in these things like the um, raffles, like the poster contest winners, and, you know, whatever else we have to do. We do that in between everything. Okay, so between each event, you kind of do a little spiel mm -hmm. and then go on to the next performer. And then this is really helpful, though, because this gives us kind of a, an itinerary of what the follow and what we can all expect. Because mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes they, they come up and they go, Charles, this is what we need to do now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I figured laying it out like this would make it just easier for us to follow. Um, I can make sure you guys have copy of, copies of this for the day of, so you're like, okay, what point are we at now? And then you know. Um, I also figured it was important to include the Arbor Day Proclamation and the Tai Chi demo in that, because that is going to be part of the flow of the event. Um, and of course, if the Arbor Day Proclamation doesn't take a full 15 minutes, then you know, then Tai Chi demo can start whenever they're ready. So. And then I spoke to Brian O'Neill, about the um, sound people oh, of mm -hmm. chaos. Uh, chaos is on 100%. He, he needs to talk to you about some of the itinerary stuff, so if you could touch base with him. He, he wanted to be here tonight, um, but just he's just booked. And, um, but he's working real closely with your scheduling and with the bands. I don't foresee any, um, any obstacles in the way. Uh, he just wants to get updated on the time frames. And I think he made one mention that maybe uh, Mojo Mike and Robert Johnson, because they're established bands, may want to play a little bit longer. But I said, you know, don't, don't really worry about it. We still got a month to go. We can work on the itineraries. And, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. But if you could touch base with Brian O'Neill. But chaos is on. The sound people are on 100%. His number one concern outside of the people playing in there a lot of time was if the second stage needed any miking, if they needed any sound. The second stage? Well, you're doing the concrete pad that's mm -hmm. in the middle of the um, mm -hmm. place. Then we then we got the then yeah. we got the stage. Yeah. So the concrete pad is it, SRHS isn't going to need any miking or anything. If okay. they've got any amps or anything, they'll set that up for themselves. And I don't know if you guys have ever been around for an SRHS performance, but they are loud They're enough loud. that they right. will be heard without any. Right. Uh, and, and I, I, that's what I had chaos. told him too. Yeah. I, I said I don't. Think Did um, Brian happen to share with you any contact info for Chaos Sound? I have their phone number now because Sarah um, gave it to me, um, but uh, we don't have any email address for them, and so to correspond with them that way, so that way we have um, their contract in writing. We would. All right, I'll try to touch base with him, and uh, I think he's been working with Sarah as well, Miss mm -hmm. Hagerty, and so if if Miss Haggerty wants to coordinate. Mm -hmm. She's she's more than welcome to. Yeah. I'm just going. Uh, what I believe I got. she actually did send um, an email uh, at some point earlier today, um, or either even yesterday. I'm sorry if um, my memory's a little fuzzy, which when it was, but um, she did ask him for you know uh, for assistance with uh, contacting Chaos Sound. So hopefully we hear back from him soon on that front. Excellent. He said he spoke to Chaos Sound today and last night. They're on 100. percent You know you know how. It, entertainment people are little. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure they're swamped, you know, having their own business and trying to manage that. So, um, you know, as soon as we can get base, that contract, everybody with them can signed. contact. But they're on. Fantastic, and it's good good to know that they are invested. <laughs> right. Do you actually want to stay up here? All right. So. And the, as far as the website goes, I'll continue to keep that updated. Um, Marcus was kind enough to make a little sign about the raffle, um, just with a little spiel about the um, about how the, the gifts were being are being donated um, by the participants of the or the vendors. And so I figured I'd show this to you guys so we can take a look. Um, if you have any comments or feedback, uh, please let me know so that way we can, you know, go forward with this. Um, I figured we would just have a, this 
the sign, um, if, any, if nothing else, the, at the booth just to help people if, in case they were curious or in case you know somebody's not standing, which there should always be one of us at the booth at any given point, I'm sure, during the event. Um, but this would help people you know, kind of understand what the process is. Um, as far as the actual sign-up portion of the raffle, I'm not sure uh, if you guys can speak to, um, if you guys can just tell me a little bit more about how you did that. Was it a tablet? Was it just a form that people, or you guys did it, the Those tickets? tickets? The tickets? So people come up and they write their name on a ticket with their mobile number. Mm -hmm. And so the sign and what is written here is not what we discussed last month in that Charles isn't necessarily making all those announcements. Nikki and I would um, text regularly, uh, you know, through every hour we mm -hmm. would pick ones and text that person that they had to come back to the booth. We found that people weren't necessarily hearing Charles announce them, so this got directly to the winners. So I would like to propose that we strike the last sentence there. We will periodically announce winners by contacting them on the mobile number provided. The other thing I, I, I see donated gift baskets. I don't think they're all going to be giving you baskets. So you might just want to say donated gifts because I, I think some of them are not. Yeah. 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 And from the applications that I've been receiving, I think you know some of them are smaller items. Some people are donating an actual gift basket, but I think some of them are just you know like an item, not necessarily a bundle of things. So, I completely understand that. Often the uh, vendors need to be casually reminded that raffle gifts are welcomed. Often mm -hmm. when we help them set up, we mention uh, the raffle and encourage them to make a, a donation because it, it isn't pro forma. They don't always pony up with, uh, so we <laughs> might visit them from time to time and suggest that that would be good advertising for them as well. Um, can I ask a quick question regarding the raffle? Yes, ma'am. Um, if we have, say, well, we have like how many people, like 47 vendors, I believe. Is that right? Uh, anyway, we have quite a few vendors. So if we have, say, 25 raffle items, do you, how, how do you go about assigning those to the, the phone numbers? Like, do you say that, you know, we're having three and just randomly they come up and choose mm -hmm. whatever they want? Is that how it works? We have a complete listing of all the prizes, or the, the items that are donated from the various vendors. Okay. And um, we uh, simply grab there's a, a bucket that everybody puts their a ticket into, mm -hmm. and they're keeping the other half, right? So, And you just stick them on the gifts, maybe? Is that how yeah. you do it? We will physically tape them on, but, um, okay. yeah, we randomly do a selection and, and then just go one, two, three, four, five, and okay. just go down the list. and That's easy. And then if, if the person doesn't come to retrieve their gift, do you just move on to the next ticket kind of thing? We do. We will circle around... So, like, if we call out five in the first hour, if somebody didn't come and claim four, we would put it back in the pool for the next hour. We give them, you know, time and, yeah, time and space. But okay. And when people come by, you say, we're, we're going to be giving away prizes in the next hour. I mean, they may have moved on and their ticket's still in that big bin, so... So okay, thank you. if the prize hasn't been claimed by the end of each hour, then you just move on. Is that, am I understanding yep. that correctly? We just keep randomly selecting people and moving on. Okay, fantastic. Um, I do have um, my work tablet that I think if we'd like to, we could probably use that to, um, so that way you guys aren't using your personal phones necessarily. We can use that to uh, contact whoever the winners are. Um, Perhaps that would be just easier to streamline things. Um, but if it's easier then for you know each person to take um, a ticket um, and then contact that individual, that's also perfectly fine. I, you know, I'm happy to do whatever works best for us. I like that Thank I you. idea in that like my area code on my cell phone isn't local to here, so people oh. often 
like we use somebody's phone that was a local phone, usually like Nikki. So it'd be great to have that. Okay, yeah. All right, and I just want to um, confirm with you guys, um, just to go over the Be a Gopher Tortoise, because I know this is coming, you know, the event itself, the day of, is going to come. Are Jeff and Marcus, are you guys okay with um, manning that booth, at least for, you know, I know you'll be at the, um, the Living Docs event when that does come up. So as long as, um, and of course, everybody can kind of be assigned to multiple places at once. I just want to make sure we um, have that kind of... I, I may actually have a scheduling conflict on that day. I have a fundraising event that I need to make sure is completely manned. Um, so I will know uh, as to whether I'm going to attend the Earth Day celebration uh, for our meeting next week, or oh. next month, rather. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, just let me know, or let us know at that meeting. We also get volunteers that are there. Some of the younger, like Boys and Girls Club people will show up and they'll also help. Fantastic. Uh, for the scavenger hunt, have we um, confirmed sponsorship for the prizes um, from Sebastian Daly? Will they be uh, sponsoring the prizes? Yes. I spoke to um, Andy Hodges at Sebastian Daly, and he's going to provide the, the grand prize, the River Cruise, and um, just like he did the last couple of years, same thing. And I apologize if I um, if I forgot this from the previous meeting. Uh, did we have like a, a written out answer key that all of you guys can reference um, for the? I know it's like the the scavenger hunt's fairly simple, um, but I just figured as long as everybody has like a copy of it, so that if people were coming in and returning in their scavenger hunts, um, you guys have it to re review with. Um, in the past, we've had an answer key available, and so as people completing it, sometimes it was helpful that we had all the answers correct. Like mm -hmm. part of the selection of who wins was they had to have a correct entry, and then you would randomly select who got the grand prize. So yes, an answer key would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Do you know um, if Kim had already created one? Because I haven't come across one in her files. Um, if if somebody else had created it, and I just didn't, you know, I just didn't have it somewhere. Um, but I will I will double check through the supplies as well and make sure. No, I haven't seen anything like that. Do we have a list of the questions? Or so, like two years ago, remember we did that one that was on the the pads mm -hmm. uh, that people took out and went with them, and it was um, those she provided answers for right there, and we marked them right in the, the iPads. Um, last year, I missed for COVID, so I'm not sure what where the answers were. I'm not even sure where the questions are. Or the, <laughs> so if you, we just had a little <laughs> pad that she had. We made them out of little, um, not cardboard, but it's like cardboard, and uh, put a little clip on it, and it just, there was only like 10 questions, pretty easy, and then she had the answers to them. But yeah, and I figured I would just, you know, we would use the same questions. I would just make sure to change the date on the form itself. And as long as that's okay I could with you guys. probably come up with the answers if that's what you're looking for. Uh, you're willing to just write them out? I can send the, sure. the, key, or the questions your way, and then we'll go from there. Why don't you send us all the questions so we can take a look at them? Maybe we want to improve them and change oh, them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We can make up the answers as we go, too, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have fun, aren't they? I mean, some of the, the questions in, in the past have included, like, named some of the species of plants or trees in the park, and mm -hmm. there's no one right answer. So um, there may be some varied responses accepted, but we can come up with some answers. Were all the questions based upon the local area that they were standing, or was it throughout Sebastian? No, you needed to be able to complete the scavenger hunt from the park. So okay. you could go across the street and see the statue, for instance. They'd ask you, you know, to look through the telescope or the whatever that was, sighting thing that's out there on the little dock. That, um, so they, what was the project that was across the street? I mean, there's... Everything's accessible right from the park. So you can't stray too far. So 
Yeah, I'll make sure to send you guys that. Um, and I'll send you the copies from all the ones that I can find um, and see if you just want to reuse the ones from last year or if there's something that needs to be amended, you know, just let me know and I'll make sure that gets done. All right, let's move on to the living docs. Uh, Jeff and I have talked about um, meeting up to do, um, kind of go over the floating reefs that we could potentially attach to uh, the twin piers. Now, I know that they, are, he suggested that they may be very heavy, um, which, you know, um, I haven't actually seen them myself and we'll work out a time to um, kind of go over stuff about the living dock. Um, so Jeff, if I may, um, these were living docks that were purchased several years back. You may be familiar, I'm not sure, but for the rest of you all. Um, and we hung them on the fishing pier behind Krabby Bill's restaurant there. Um, during the hurricane, one of them got dislodged, ended up, you know, in the the drink, and, and we pulled it, somebody pulled it up onto shore, okay? So once we saw it there, um, it was all dried up, all of the, you know, anything that had been living in there is now dried up and gone, so we put it out by the Parks and Rec building um, until we could reattach it. Now, the second one was float, was hanging at that point, but there was a big white pelican on it, so I'm not blaming the pelican, mm -hmm. but suddenly it was in the drink again, and that's where it is today. So we, we were thinking, and we tried to dislodge it, but it's kind of sitting in there, so I didn't know if you wanted to go look at it first. I mean, we have the one that's dry docked, we have the one that's sitting in the mud, and we're not quite sure what to do, but um, one of the ideas was we, we'd like to reattach them, and we think that they can still be utilized, but it'd be great if you could look at them. Um, and then uh, apparently we might have some grant dollars. One of the ideas was if you're showing everybody, you know, the different various things about it, it's online. I, I can make, let me remind myself to send you all the information on the, on the floating deck. Hold on. Um, then maybe we can then say, hey, if you're interested in doing it on your dock, you know, we can take your name and number and do a drawing or something. If we can recover the one that was recovered and take a look at it, maybe we can clean it up and make it a part of, of uh, this whole living dock uh, escapade, including some additional wraps. Um, Felicia and I were talking about uh, acquiring a few of these from the county and, and just as a standby, we do want to take one of these wraps down um, and go over the colonization that occurred. It, it's really quite fun. And, and just keep in mind that last year we nailed them. They're not coming off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, well, uh, just with the appropriate to let you know. tools, they'll come off. What's that? <laughs> with the out. appropriate tools, they'll come off. Well, it, it, we'll, yes. we'll just remove one or so, just for a show and yeah, tell. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to clip around the nail and the... Uh, exactly. Um, but a combination of the two showed two different strategies for recruitment. Um, I, I don't remember if it was Thomas, uh, but Kim and I, and I think Thomas, actually went to... Uh, uh, look at these floating docks. Yes, I remember and, that uh, day, yes. We couldn't budge them. I mean, they they weighed a ton, that would, which is good. Right, um, right, right, right. You know, biofouling was, was tremendous, but we'd never be able to drag them. Even with a boat, we wouldn't be able to drag them over to uh, the Twin Piers. But having one that's stripped down, illustrating what it can do, um, and I think that if we can figure out a way to get that one off the bottom, at least enough to snap some photographs. Um, we can illustrate uh, uh, the degree of colonization that we get from from following communities and oysters and everything else we're hoping to settle out. Well, my guess is if we can get it off the bottom, we can get it out of the water. Because that's what's holding it, the, the mud and the tension between the the structure in the bottom is what's keeping I, it in I, place. I don't have a lot of confidence we're going to be able to do this. <laughs> I, do have a, I do have a friend that has a, a boom with a lift who might be willing to help us. Okay. I, I have a question regarding these. I haven't seen the, the little, the, the living docks. How big are they? Like the size of a pallet or something? The mats what? themselves are not quite that big, but close. But uh, what probably are they made meter, of? They're probably a meter square, three feet square. The mats... Um, okay. The floating uh, 
configuration is a little bit bigger. Is there, is there some way to make something smaller that could be retrieved at the end of a year to show people? Probably what for show and tell purposes yeah. rather than... Is this, as opposed to having one ginormous thing there, just to have a small sample one that you could retrieve to show them? Well, if we can recover the one that's that's been retrieved from the bottom and taken out to public works, then we'll we'll have it there for demo purposes. Uh, yeah, because that would be the size that grant money notwithstanding, that would be the size that we would distribute to people to put on their own docks. Okay, I'll have to see them this year, obviously. So okay, and and, and that's a really great thought, though. I haven't looked at the website in since we bought them several years back now this manufacturer may have come up with a smaller version or whatever. So I'll explore that and I'll send you guys all those flyers and the information that I come up with because that's that's a good thought if there's a smaller version that a homeowner might be more interested in. Well, well I'm, I'm saying also just for like whenever you have these people down there looking at it, that instead of trying to talk about this, you know, this big piece of dock or with all the, the growth on it, just to have something that's like, you know, just a foot square or something that you could just pop up and say, well, this is what's happened in a year. You know what sure. I mean? Sure, but, but one of the things we want to get across is that it's surface area that counts mm -hmm. because the, the greater the surface area, the greater the recruitment and settle out if we're actually looking for something to effectively work on improving the, the lagoon itself. I understand that, but I'm just to show them this is in this small area this is what happened in a year as opposed to like a big meter sized piece of you know apparatus well just it's, a thought. It's pretty substantial when we pull one of these mats that we wrap the pilings with um it's, it's pretty well covered it's a good demonstration smaller okay. would be a, a good way to get at it okay. as well that okay. definitely just sounds like something we can work on going forward to a model for homeowners and I'm sorry, are we saying that there are wraps available and that we have some extra pilings that we could... How many did we wrap last year? No, we wrapped... We stayed on, just on the first pier. We haven't gone, mm -hmm. we haven't gone down to the mm -hmm. second one yet. Um, and we're exploring um, the extent to which we can acquire new mats. Um, if nothing else, we want to demonstrate what the, the floating uh, docks can do. Uh, we want to illustrate the, the settling that occurs just on wrapped pilings. And then if we have additional mats, we don't need to do 40 like we did the first year, but if we did 10 or 12 on the second set of pilings, then it, it would court more involvement, which I think is what we're after. Getting them wet and pounding a couple of nails on a piling and using some wire ties gives them a, a level of, of involvement that is exactly what we're looking for here. It gives them some ownership. Are there any additional questions on the living docks and wraps? I do have one thing on this point. Um, if we are comfortable with what we've got going on as far as living docks, I can just alter the dates um, and the times on the, or if we want to keep the times the same for the actual event portion, um, then I'll just make sure that the date is changed on the flyer and I'll get that to you guys. That way we can distribute that in with the rest of our flyers. So. If you uh, want some updated photographs, I think. Um, did we get more oyster mats to use for this year or no? I'm sorry, what was that? Did we get more oyster mats to use on the docks this year or no? Um, as far as I know, we don't have any. Now, I you know we have some oyster-related supplies, but I don't think we have any mats. I think we got them from another agency, didn't we? We did. I think it was, I think it was Indian River County. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's what it looked like in Kim's notes, that it was. Yeah, so that's what Felicia's going to look up, and then I'd be happy to pick them up once we can identify them. If you need pictures from last year's event... Um, where we did some of the things we're going to duplicate this year. I'll, I'll send you some, and you can choose, maybe change the flyer a little bit. Oh, yeah, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Any additional comments on moving docks? No? We'll keep on going to volunteers, looks like, next. All right. 
Great. So once that Living Docs flyer is ready, I'll send that off to Ruth. Um, and if you guys have any ideas of what a, for as far as the volunteers goes, if you guys have any preconceived ideas of what tasks the volunteers um, that we have can be sent off to, so that way I can make a list. Um, I know there'll be at the Gopher, you know, the, um, the Be a Gopher Tortoise um, event. Um, I did have the idea that perhaps when we have the seeds to make the seed packets, perhaps that would be something that the volunteers can do. If we have had an issue with surplus volunteers and not enough activities for the volunteers in the past, then maybe that's something that they'd be willing to partake in. Um, but I would like to hear your ideas as far as tasks for them. Car wash. <laughs> so <clears throat> we are still looking to determine the number that we will get. Um, we have them come and help to do a little bit of the setup. They, if they are able to get there a little early, we have them go around to the vendors and make sure that the vendors have given any um, gifts that they want to. Um, we have them start at the gopher tor tortoise, and that's something we hope that they will man all day. We to ask them if they would like to go and be part of the living dock. We do want them to have the experience of the day, too, not just complete volunteering of time. <clears throat> if they're there at the end, we ask them to help pick up the little flags and all the numbers that were left around and go and pick up trash. We have them assist with whatever the booth activities are. So if any of our vendors have a booth activity, we tend to send them over and have them participate in that. And we try to have them for a few hours and then swap them out through the day so they're not, typically they only give us a couple hours at a time. So um, what we try to do is to get an understanding of what the activities are that each of the vendors are doing that really helps us. Um, and then uh, we also have them, by the way, walk around and look for um, kids to be aware of the scavenger hunt, like actively go and say, hey, have you tried this activity and, and meet and greet the public, so to speak, and make them aware of what's going on and what's available. So. Um, those are the activities that we get them involved in. And as you can see, we don't know how many volunteers and we don't know how many activities at the moment. Um, we did a really good job last year of recruiting volunteers. Um, and, and usually we have more volunteers that we know what to do with. <laughs> do you so know approximately how many you had last time? I was out last year. <laughs> I, I remember there was a lot of them. I know the charter school and the boys and girls club. They probably we probably had about thirty oh. kids. And we had no idea what to do with them. <laughs> there was two. There were actually too many. Oh. Instead of sending them like in in waves, they just all came at the same time. So all was, in the morning, too. Yeah. So it was like we were all busy doing stuff already, and it was hard to give them chores to do because they all came early. So maybe this time we can say, can you send three at this time and three at this time and three at this time? So I'll try to do that coordination a little more tightly this year. Um, that was our biggest volunteer year. Oh, yeah. um, so previous years, I'd say we had like 10. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. So it was quite the, mm -hmm. quite the difference. The Boys and Girls Club are definitely in for this year. And... They haven't given me a number, but they want to be in touch and kind of work with parents and figure that out. Um, but I think, again, <clears throat> knowing what the vendors might have as an activity will be helpful to match up a number and get keep that under control through the day. Did that answer your question? Yes, no, that helps a lot. I will make sure that um, with the... Um, with creating the list of the vendors who've applied, I'll also create a list of the vendor activities to, um, I think actually, as as each one has been approved, Ron has been creating uh, spreadsheets for us that show um, show who has donated a prize or who has um, agreed to host an activity. So um, I'll send you that finished list once we have all of the activities, or at least, to, at least pre preliminarily, to give us an idea of how many uh, booths may re require some additional help. 
The um, charter school has been contacted as well. I just haven't heard back from them. So call, email, and waiting. Yeah. It is early. Mm -hmm. Did you have any, uh, just because it's on the list, did you have any contact Boy Scouts at all? Were there any Boy Scouts to contact? I've never contacted the Boy Scouts. Oh. Okay. Yeah, well, if anybody knows any contact, any scouting contacts in the area, because I don't know anyone, um, but if anybody happens to know anyone, I, I have scouting contacts. But if we get enough from the Boys and Girls Club and the Charter Junior High, too many is too many. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, that's fair. Right. Any additional questions on volunteers? No. We'll move on to NRV booth. Okay, so the major thing that we need to talk about for our own booth is the um, seed packets. Um, and like I did mention, um, maybe to give, if we have a surplus of volunteers this time, maybe you know reserving some of the seed packets to be put together by the volunteers, maybe that would be a good idea. Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, not a good idea? You'll have more <laughs> seeds on the grass than you'll have ever in the packet. I'm I sorry. Can, I concur. Okay, that's And fair. these do need to be prepared in advance. Yes. We Got together Usually we do it over at the club because we have the big tables and we can just lay them all out. Okay, uh, Lisa, is that considered a special meeting or is it just a workshop day for them? It's it's fine. Don't okay. worry about that. Okay. Um, now our seed costs. Um, Sherida looked into the potential costs. Um, there's a couple companies that were we were looking into. There's Live Monarchs. Um, they have a few different um, options. Um, uh, you could get 200 seed uh, packs pre-made, which is not what you guys have done in the past. You've made them yourselves, and we still have the empty packets that we can use. Um, but that is they, that price is at 50 cents each. Um, if you want the DIY version, where you get the packets and the seeds just separate, um, it's five cents less. Um, bulk seeds is 15 dollars, but that is only milkweed, is that correct? Yeah, I would not suggest that. Um, and then American Meadows um, is for half a pound of n our native southeast seed mix that would be twenty four ninety five, which I think, and if that's at approximately 130 to 140 packets um, at a half a teaspoon per packet. Um, so I just wanted to get your guys' input on that. Um, I think American Meadows is the best way to go, but based on what you guys have done in the past, you know, how many packets will we need? Do I need to order, you know, like if I was to order from American Meadows, do I need to order a couple, maybe three? So we had hundreds. I was going to say, we, <clears throat> I think we ran out quickly at 200. Oh. On our yeah, we, we made hundreds of them and they were gone. Yeah, I think four or 500. It was yeah, and I think like that it. she also had diff two different kinds of seats. So she did get... The, yeah. I think she got the monarch, and then we put them in with the other. Oh, okay. Okay, so we kind of mixed them together, so they had both. Uh, I, I would suggest, though, on the um, on the, the the native southeast seeds, they will have some milkweed in there. So it's all it's natives, and it just depends upon what seeds are available. And so it's going to be random because they may not have certain kinds of milkweed and only certain kinds of milkweed will grow here. It's not really the right mix. The native milkweed does not do well in, in a, a normal garden. It really doesn't because it's a swamp milkweed. So um, so I would just kind of stick with the, the wildflower, native wildflower mix. Because what they're going to do is you're, you're providing pollinators. You want flowers that bloom that are feeding the butterflies, not the caterpillars. So that way they'll have more fun getting the butterflies. They'll see the butterflies. They won't see the caterpillars. So I would suggest the, the American Meadows, uh, a quarter of a pound will give us about 130 packets. So that's $25. So if we were to do American Meadows, I'd have to order several of those, is that correct? Well, it depends on how much you want to spend. Mm -hmm. So it's either um, a half a pound, which would be about $50. And that would be roughly 300 things, 300 packets. So we have 
Do we have the, the packages to put them in, or do we have to make them up? I think we have approximately like 200 little of the little envelopes to put them in. Um, I'm sure we could get more. I'm just not sure where, where we bought them in the past. Um, but I'm sure they don't cost very much to acquire those. Do we have an opinion from the rest of the board on the type of seeds? You wanted to go with just the one pack of the wildflowers? Is that the ones we're going to go with? Yeah, I, I agree. I do too. So, um, just to get, just to make sure I'm clear, how many? Because if that's at a, a half a pound for approximately 130, or sorry, quarter pound, um, should I buy a half pound? Do I need to buy? Half pound? Okay. That would be fifty dollars. Yeah. How how are we on our budget? I mean, would it hurt at this time? We've we've never gone wrong with having excess seed, like for mm -hmm. the Christmas parade or what have have you, whatever the events are. So, mm -hmm. so um, as of right now, um, we are if we're just not including the seeds, we're at like seven hundred and ten dollars ex in expenses. Um, that's also not including um, Chaos Sound, um, whatever our payment is going to be for them. I expect it would be the same as last year, um, unless you know, uh, you know, prices change. So we'll work with them as needed. Um, but yeah, so we our budget is two thousand dollars, so we have enough room if we need to to buy you know additional bags of the seeds. So. No, three get, bags? Yes, please. And then go ahead and get more envelopes. And remember that we take those envelopes and we put the Sebastian, sustainable Sebastian logo or something on there. So it's like a three step process to make sure you have the envelope with the sticker on it and then stick the seeds yeah. in it and then. <clears throat> assembly line. Yeah. There was assembly line. And I did. Um, I did inquire about, instead of maybe using stickers, um, getting a stamp that you guys can just stamp it, um, so that way we're not, you know, like using up stickers that we could be giving out to people um, for, so we can just stamp the packets. Um, I have to reach back out to uh, Total Print to see, you know, what the what the quote would be for that. Um, but if it's not too expensive, then we if we could put it into the budget for this year, then we'll, you know. I might just do that so that way, you know, we have that. And then the stickers can be used, like I said, for you know, distributing so people can have the sustainable Sebastian logo. One more thing, Felicia. On, on the, the packets that we're going to put the seeds in, are they plastic or paper or paper. what? Paper. paper. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can do sustainable Seb Sebastian on it and then put native wildflower mix? Yeah, there is actually um, a label a roll of labels that Kim left in the uh, cabinet with the with the packets that says uh, this, I think it says something to the effect of this packet has contains native wildflower okay, seeds, that's, something like that. That's perfect, um, thank you. If we need to, I can order more. I'm not sure how many are in the roll, um, but I'll find out where she ordered them and okay, can get more of those. Good. Well, great meeting so far, everybody, guys. Um, any additional questions on the seed packets or what we're handing out there? Well, we're going to have to make a date to do oh, these. Yeah. So, I mean, I know you have to order the stuff. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess maybe the first week in April is that do we have the stuff by then, or do you want to wait till the second week in April? I mean, there are, there are for those who celebrate Easter holidays coming in right around then too. Right, the ninth is Easter, right? Mm -hmm. I don't mind scheduling it for the first week in April. Um, I, you know, as soon as I put in the order for um, American Meadows, I'll let you guys know approximately when it. You know, I'll just let you know when it's arriving, and then the. Okay, can, and then we'll plan it from then. Yeah. As soon as as soon as after that as mm -hmm. we can. Okay. Um, what? Okay, so we have the, the art club. <clears throat> anytime after three, we can go over there, which is what we kind of did last year. <clears throat> We we met over there at three, mm -hmm. so Monday through Thursday we can do that. Okay, fantastic. Um, <clears throat> would I wish I had a, a calendar in front of me? Um, I apologize. Would say the aha uh -huh, the little mini calendars. Would the first Wednesday in April 
May I suggest that you make sure that you're going to have all yeah. of the supplies by that date mm -hmm. before yeah. we talk about a date? That's fair. Yeah. Okay, so so make your list and then follow through with when that can be shipped and arrived, mm -hmm. and then we can mm -hmm. go out and, and tell everybody what date might be best. Okay, okay. So we'll make a suggestion for the date when we have all the supplies. Yes, yes. but we're, we're thinking about the first week of April. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Any additional questions on the seed packets or anything? Along with the seed packets, it also lists um, that we have some brochures and such to fold, but we we have a whole bunch of printing to do and hand handouts. People come by and they have questions, maybe about sustainable Sebastian, maybe about the fertilizer, maybe about uh, I don't know. I can't remember all the things that we printed out, but we. Hey, Ruth, what about the little? card that uh, Kim had made up with the little QR codes on it. It was just like that card. That would be great. Would Thank you, dear. <laughs> would that be something we'd want to hand out instead of a brochure? Because it'd be great. Then we'll make sure that those, get, then we don't have to fold. I don't know about you, but my arthritis is killing me today. <laughs> well, we, we combined the creating of the seed packets along with folding. So we had uh, Quite an enterprise going here. But what brochures mm -hmm. are you folding? Because I'm I confused. So uh, I remember that <clears throat> one of our years we gave out um, bags as well, and in the bag we put a folder, and in the folder had many it was stuffed with many articles, and so we would assemble all the different articles in in that. Um, it it was way waste you know, recycling kind of things. It was, <laughs> it was a slew of stuff. Yeah, it was almost every brochure that we we had, we would print out and put it there. Um, Trying to use up what we had around and just get it out there. But people don't want to be necessarily caring. And I'm just saying what was in the past, what, what makes sense this today, would this probably would work. be fine. I think that, you know, we don't have to, Waste yeah. all that paper if we have these six things on here. That that's a right. good start. And I can make sure that at the, our booth we have um, all the stuff that is already printed out because Kim had left an entire um, outreach drawer uh, of you know information. And if there's something in particular that we want, like maybe I can make a few extra copies of of that particular thing. Um, but yeah. Yeah, just an observation for some of the people that visited our booth last year. Uh, especially older people who looked at the QR codes and had no clue <laughs> and preferred a brochure or something that they could have in their hand and read. And I think it's not the young folks that were necessarily going to be our greatest audience um, based on past experience. We tend to have more older people, so I, I think the brochures are valuable. I, I don't disavow the importance of a QR code, but we need to consider our audience. We'll look through them and see what we already have and then what's maybe applicable and bring a bunch over. How's that sound? Okay. One thing I want to add, is it possible to move our booth because we get a lot of people talking to us and we're so close to music, it makes it really difficult to converse with the public as they come up. You know, that was really a, a, a very difficult last year to try to talk to somebody when, not that the music wasn't good, and enjoyable, but it was a hindrance for us to talk to people. A lot of this is taking place on the concrete pad this year, though, so that might. Oh, is it uh, going? Where's the show? Uh, the um, stage going to be? In the the, the same stage place. will be in the same spot. That's where the music is coming from. But well, the um, the but band will be on the concrete pad. In the Tai Chi demo, sorry. Yeah, first the, thing in the yes, but I'm, I'm more, more concerned about the performers than I am about the school band. We can control the sound levels this year for sure. We just I'm gonna hold the you chaos. to that, Charles. Huh? I'm gonna hold that to you. Yes, sir. You got <laughs> it. Or whenever, or whenever you go up there, I'm gonna lower the sound so yes. you have to yell. You got it. <laughs> well, you might remember it got disconnected last year, which really made our job a lot easier. We tried. Easier. We tried. Yes. <laughs> and I noticed though it didn't slow him down. <laughs> Did not. <laughs> But do you guys find that it's it's irritating to have the booth right next to the stage? I mean, I know as far as it, it convenience was. purposes. It really was, especially when people were trying to talk to us. And 
it made it difficult. Just move, just move it down like three boots wide. Yeah, I'm not asking so you to put it on the other right side. So you're not right next to it. Mm -hmm. We're not talking across the other side. Yeah, right. And especially if Charles needs to be getting you know, up on the stage between acts, um, and if there's anything else that we you know, need to make sure, like if we have somebody um, manning the stage, coordinating like the movement on and off of the stage, then you know, we'll kind of need to be nearby. Definitely, but yeah, I can see if we can work that out to. Well, this is the only day Charles away. gets his steps in, so it's good to move us further away. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get all my steps in, man. <laughs> got to get my steps in. Anything but the dogs this year. <laughs> okay, is there any additional questions about um, anything we just spoke about, the seeds and the volunteers? If not, we'll we'll move on. It looks like. Um, the stormwater FEMA booth and advertising is coming up. All right. Um, everything is good there as of right now. Um, I'll coordinate with um, Eric and Josh and Michelle and Karen regarding this stuff. Um, so that's not anything that you guys have to worry about. Um, now on to uh, advertising, unless there's any other questions regarding the stormwater stuff. Um, for advertising, like I said earlier in the meeting, uh, Andy Hodges did reach out to me, so I will send him all our information um, about the times and you know what's going on during the event. Um, so he has all of that, and then they will um, they will publish their um, little press release for us, and then they will also give us the booth, uh, not the booth, the banner that they'll be, that will be used on the stage as they've done um, in previous years. Um, and I believe they'll bring that to us the week of the event um, for us to hang up. Um, and there's also um, local radio stations that you could send press releases to that would announce it, as well as um, TC Palm is, is, is the large um, general newspaper service, and uh, the, the Florida Today newspaper is our northern uh, newspaper service. You said Florida Today and TC Palm. Yeah, they're, they're the rig, they're the big print service outlets. And uh, Sarah, if I can call on you, um, I know you were doing research into the um, possible advertisement options and the costs. Um, if you could speak to that a little bit. Uh, so I didn't know exactly what we wanted to advertise. Uh, so that would be helpful in getting exact information. Anything that I have, I have put um, into our spreadsheet. I did not think of Florida today, but there are some smaller free newspapers there as well. And I know we had also talked about um, possibly just advertising through their uh, calendar co column. So <clears throat> I don't know if, if we want to make a decision about what exactly we want to advertise, like, for instance, you know, um, I think they usually do like a quarter of a page or something to that effect. If we want to do an advertising, advertise, what exactly do we want? In previous press releases, it was just the basic event information, like, um, like the live music, the events that were going on, like the living docs and stuff like that. Um, and, and I think, Donna, don't, don't you usually um, advertise your art club events through a lot of these, um, the same newspaper uh, outlets that we're talking about? Okay, um, we, we do all the, the calendars. We have a list yeah. of the, the calendars and the list of um, where we're distributing the flyers. Are you know they're, they're printed flyers that we take out and deliver, and we usually put we've advertised with Sebastian Daly and we've advertised with Hometown News is the other one. Okay, so those you, are the only two calendars that you um, or you did actual advertising. Stuff. We do actual advertising with Sebastian Daly and Hometown News. Okay, okay, and the calendars they just do that. That's a free service. Am I correct? The calendars are free. Okay, okay. So, essentially all I need to know is, is at what capacity would we want to advertise if we were going to pay for it? 
Otherwise, we would just do it in the calendar. I know, I know for so, our so. club to advertise in the hometown news, it's like $150 for one. Yeah. And Sebastian yeah. Daly is like over 200 Yeah. So. It was rather expensive yeah. for even a, a smaller advertisement. So really that depends on what you guys think about what we have left in the budget and whether or not doing just the calendar would be fine or if we want to do an actual advertising. Uh, we've been doing just a calendar. I haven't seen any real national stuff like that. Just what Donna had just said. Um, it looks like it's just through calendar at Vero News, info at Vero News, and um, Vero Beach hometown news flash. Just their basic calendars. Right. And there's a, even yeah. more of them. Like I said, we have community ones and all, too. I can mm -hmm. share the list with you, uh, with Felicia. I thought I gave it to you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, I did put, I think, like, there was five or six different outlets on our spreadsheet now. I did the um, Blue Turtle News, which I did find a price for them, for and, and it kind of gave an idea of, a, you know, like a three by five ad or so much yeah. money. Yeah, uh, I, I really think you're not going to get much of a bang for your buck with spending the money there. Because yeah. a lot of people don't even get the paper anymore. Mm -hmm. The hometown news we started doing because it's for, it's free. So people will pick yeah. that up. It's yeah. not really delivered so much as it's at c certain places that you can go and pick it up. But it's you have to have it in for that week. You know, yeah. not in advance. It would be the week of the... Oh, event. so they do, they don't take the information away in advance. It would just be the week. They of they do, but I'm saying it would only be printed that one time. Oh, I understand. Because it's a weekly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and that's one hundred and fifty dollars. So. Mm -hmm. so I guess the question really is: Is do we want to spend that money? Yeah, I'm fine with just doing the calendars if that what's work what has worked in the past and what works for you guys. And yeah, absolutely, we can just. Go ahead with that, and I'll make sure you get all the information. Donna, yeah, so that's we... what I would recommend. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Of course. Is there any additional questions on the advertising part of this? No? Okay, I guess we'll move on to items from the city of Sebastian. Um, as far as this goes, unless there's something in particular that I need to make sure I request from... Um, you know, our Parks and Recs guys, um, as far as tables or tents or whatever, um, or if there's something that I've, or chairs, if there's something I'm missing on this list, please let me know. Um, but this is based on Kim's list from last time, and I figure we'll just keep it the same. And then if we don't need that many tables and chairs and tents next year, then we'll do without. And if we do need them, then, you know, I'll add more to the list, whatever is necessary. Pretty much everything on there. Pretty much everything on that part is up to you, Felicia, Miss Fraser. And that pretty much takes us to the end for total event budget. And we already spoke about the media. So if you need to talk about the budget at all, we spoke about it already a little bit. But that's where we're at. Yeah, there's nothing left from me. If there's got any comments or any information that I'm missing, like anything that I'm missing, please. Let me know. Um, okay, just one other table for the face painting, if you could oh, add that. An additional table for face painting? One big table. Is yeah. Good. Um, what are those sizes? So, like one of the eight foot tables? Yeah. Uh, that would be great. One, if you have an eight foot table, one, one would be fine. Okay. Absolutely. I will make sure. Does anybody ha on the board or participating online at home have any additional questions about anything we spoke about tonight with Earth Day? I don't have any questions. I'm good. I'd like to thank everybody for participating so much. It's a lot of work to get this all put together for the City of Sebastian. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody that the City Council finds this to be one of our most important 
projects uh, representing the city, uh, as well as the living docks. They really want to put that on the front page of everything and make sure that um, that, that we try to, to stress that going forward. Okay, if we don't have anything else left for unfinished business for Earth Day planning, we'll move on to item number nine, new business. Is there any additional new business? Seeing none, we'll move on to item 10. Uh, if I can get a motion for adjournment, we'll end this meeting. I make a motion to adjourn. Can you get a second? I'll second. Voice vote for approval for motion for adjournment. Aye. 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 This meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming.